In this chapter, we're going to talk about sharpening. Now, I know good cameras, like I've got a Nikon. You guys might have Nikons, Canons, whatever. I've got some okay glass. So I've got everything I need. I get out there and I shoot photographs and I sharpen them as I'm shooting, which is what you're supposed to do. Never ever get into something like Photoshop and get into this mindset that if the picture ain't that good, I'll just fix it in Photoshop. I mean, that's not a good attitude to have. I don't have to focus that much. I can refocus it in Photoshop. That's, again, not a good attitude. With that said, even though the images really look good, most digital images, maybe not all, but most, would benefit from just a little smidgen of sharpening. So we got a nice smiley guy right here, right? Let's go ahead and open him up. He is 285 underscore 294157.jpg. That's the identifier number for this particular image in case you want to go to photospin.com and check them out because they are pretty cool. We want to sharpen smiling dude up. Where do we go? Well, if you go up to the word filter on the pull down menu and go down to sharpen, you can see we've got quite a few. You've got sharpen, sharpen edges, and sharpen more. Now, those three are controlled by Photoshop. Then you have Smart Sharpen and Unsharp Mask, which we get to control. Now, I'm a control freak. I like to control things. But in this lesson, let's just talk about those first three because they are useful if you know how to apply them. But before we do apply one, I would be a horrible host if I didn't show you something, and that's Convert for Smart Filters. If we don't convert this layer for Smart Filters, if we try to use any of these filters on it, we are permanently changing the information and we will eventually get to the point where we won't be able to undo it. Anytime you have the ability to use a smart layer, you should. Now, there are some things you can't do to smart layers and that's why we have the choice of using it or not. But in this case, we can. So we're going to say convert for smart filters. And you can see there's a little square down on the bottom right here. And that means that is a smart layer. You say, well, Andy, what if I get through a process you know, I've got it the way I want it to be, and I'm happy with it, but I'm going on to something else, and it says you can't do that because it's a smart filter. For example, if you go to the word filter, we can no longer do a vanishing point, and you want to do that. What do you do? If you right-click on that layer and come down, you do have a rasterize option right there. And what that does is it converts it back into just regular paint, but remember what that also does. It means that what you're working with now is a regular layer and everything that you've done to it from that point is now permanent. If you can use smart, you should. Let's go back to sharpening. Up to the word filter and down here, and we will start with sharpen. Remember, Photoshop controls it. You just click it. That doesn't really look like a whole lot happened. Let me move this up here so we can really see what's going on. We now have a smart filters layer and there's the sharpen. We can apply as many things as we want here and it will list them one at a time as we do them. Also, we can turn it on or off to see the before and the after, which is nice. And if you double click here, you get options to control exactly what you did, including blending modes and opacity. Let's get out of here. Now, the only way I can really show you what's going on is to overdo it. I've got a philosophy. Anything worth doing is worth overdoing. If we go back up to the word filter, you will notice that the first option is the last thing we did, which was sharpen. If I press Control F, and that's Control F in Windows and Command F on a Macintosh, if I click here or press Control F, it will reapply sharpen again. Watch the image. Eventually, it's going to get overdone. Now, see how it's applying the sharpening across the whole image. It's not making compensation for areas that shouldn't be sharpened. This particular filter is a sledgehammer. It just does everything. You say, well, why do I need everything done? Well, let me give you an example. You've got a landscape type of image where everything in the image is at a discrete distance. This one actually works pretty good for that. Now, let's do this. Let's grab here, and I'm going to drag to the trash. Let's start again. Let's go up to filter again and go down to sharpen more. I'm going to use the shortcut, the Control or the Command F. And you say, well, it kind of looks like the other one. And I would totally agree with that. Sharpen More, to me, is almost the exact same thing as Sharpen, except it does it faster. We had eight or nine Sharpens before we got that look. Now we only have about four. It's more aggressive. That's one way to look at it. Let's go ahead and get out of here by dragging it out. Start again. I love 
Smart Filter Layers. Let's come back up to Filter one more time and go down to Sharpen and look at Sharpen Edges. Again, we have to do it several times so you can see it. I'm going to press the shortcut Command Control F. And you say, wow, I mean, I can start seeing some things happening. Like if you look in his hair, I mean, look at what's going on up here. And I turn that off. And you can see the before and the after. What is it doing? Sharpen Edges is a little bit more intelligent. And again, I've totally overdone it just to prove the point. It looks at areas like the pieces of his hair and says, hmm, I should sharpen those. Edges is another word that doesn't exist in a two-dimensional surface. There's no edges here. It's a flat surface. But the edges are determined by the algorithms in this particular filter as really big jumps between color or brightness. And those are the areas it actually will try to sharpen. Now, most of the time, you're only going to do this like once or twice. But I went this far just to kind of prove that point. This is the best one for portraitures. Now, I like the other ones that we used if you're talking about landscapes and everything's kind of far away. But when you're dealing with something like this, there are areas you want to sharpen and areas you don't want to sharpen. We're still not in control. But if you just need a really kind of down and dirty way to do it, either the sharpen, the sharpen more, or the sharpen edges are a great way to do it. And of course, if we drag that to the trash, everything that we've done goes back to normal. Don't forget that you have smart filter layers. Total non-destructive editing the ability to come back days later and change your mind without having to go back to the original and starting all over again. That's why they are there. And here's another point to consider when you're printing. Printed images will look softer than something that's viewed on a monitor, so you might have to go back and forth a couple of times until you get it right, and that's why we have these layers, non-destructive editing.